and you're live. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm so happy to be here with you from the Maui Aloha Project. Uh, we, the Maui Aloha Project, are honored to be included in We, the World's 11 Days of Global Unity. I've been attending many of the sessions and I thank Rick, Jim, Callum, and so many of the others for their amazing visioning and bringing together such a stellar group of individuals, groups, conversations, and initiatives. It has all been so rich and hopeful. Before I share a picture of the Maui Aloha Project map, I want to share a little bit about myself. I am Stephanie Schuler, and I'm in Toronto, Canada. I'm a mother to three young adults, and I'm in my final year of my doctoral studies at the University of Toronto, OISE, the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education. My particular thesis research explores school children's experiences with their language learning disabilities, systemic labeling, and self-esteem. I've conducted other research pertaining to values, raising children, the school years, well-being, and thriving. With a degree in play and leisure studies, a background in holistic education, and several decades immersed in learning spaces outside of the classroom, I know that there is much development and learning to be had individually, community, communally, and planetarily in these other spaces too. I keep busy as a learning and community design consultant, as host and producer of a podcast series that highlights global educators in the areas of languages and literacies. I have a Qigong practice. I facilitate in-person and online conferences and coordinate climate smart urban learning food garden initiatives with children and communities intended to be shared with other communities via a global unity network. As a social entrepreneur, I went on to be a founder and a director of the Maui Aloha Project Eco Village Initiative. And the Maui Aloha Project is a conscious creation, a conscious co-creation of new paradigms for living, learning and healing. MAP is a community design initiative that suggests conscious, sustainable, and regenerative well being practices. MAP is rooted in inclusive intergenerational communities that celebrate neurodiverse learners, encourage multi literacies, and support a growth based system rather than the current deficit disability model system. We want to remember and incorporate Indigenous, ancient and cultural wisdoms and merge them with new green technologies and practices as stewards of the earth and of each other. Our MAP Vision Council ha has spent years living and or being involved in numerous intentional communities around the world. We have spent the past year sowing the seeds of the Maui Aloha Project by meeting with hundreds of people committed to this communal vision. We want to help support the co-creation of communities that are regenerative and thriving and aim to address many of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, as established by the United Nations, for peaceful and thriving coexistence on planet Earth. The Maui Aloha Project is currently in its final stages of acquiring land in Maui, Hawaii and Ontario, Canada, and are in conversations with many groups wanting to amplify these living possibilities globally. We hope to be a blueprint for supporting the growth of regenerative communities around the world by many names, but so that we may shift the paradigm to value the well-being of we versus I. I've prepared a PowerPoint to share with everyone of different pictures and different bits of information that might make it more e uh, interesting to follow. And I welcome uh, you to follow up with us uh, by emailing us or contacting us. And so it began with a reevaluating re and redesigning to serve people in the planet, the co-creation of Maui Aloha Project Eco Village Initiative. And in our early days, I met an artist um, and an individual who spends his time 
uh, visiting various communities per around the world and giving of his talents and um, and skill sets in return for a place to live and food to eat. And we spoke about our mutual visions for community and regenerative communities, thriving communities that care for and about each other and the planet. And I gave him a list of some of the essential um, um, spaces that we would want, whether it's in an urban or a rural setting. And this is what he drew. In the center, we see a main kitchen with dining spaces around it for residents and for guests. And we see spaces for living uh, for guests and for people who live there. Some people may come for afternoon tea, for a meeting. You may come for a weekend retreat, uh, a family reunion, uh, meetings, conferences, and you may decide to stay for 40 years. And there'll be all kinds of living spaces, alternatives from ranch houses to tents, to tiny homes, all kinds of possibilities. I'll show you some great pictures later on. And then of course, a healing area, uh, which was pre-COVID. Right now we're in the midst of COVID-19 around the world. And certainly I speak from a community um, and an education perspective, concern for all of our people and all of our societies. Um, but um, mostly for the kids as well. And uh, we're gonna need opportunities for healing, healing in nature, with nature. And you can see from this picture that there's all kinds of spaces for meditation and yoga, dance and therapy and water immersion. And then you can also see in the bottom of this picture in the bottom right, um, spaces for a learning center, an intergenerational learning center, a democratic learning environment where we can, counselors and teachers and older kids and community members can be around the children in the community as they self-direct their learning, which is called eudagogy, and uh, support their learning as whatever they're doing, whether it be play or whatnot, not necessarily from an externally imposed curriculum and shared spaces, co-working spaces, library, and then of course, barns and stables and farms. And um, the UN Millennium Ecosystem, this ecosystem, assistance, system assessment of 2005 called agriculture the largest threat to biodiversity and ecosystem function of any single human activity. And this uh, part of this, um, main part is to be self-sufficient as a low as as much as we can um, and to perhaps be off grid and conversations need to be had for those spaces as well so aloha a everybody i'm based in toronto uh, but this maui aloha project emerged on maui in sacred conversation following um 12 21 12 December uh, 21 2012 which is believed to be the dawning of the feminine era and I know in other conversations over the past week we talked about uh, the you know, divine feminine rising in the age of Aquarius so um, we hope that you'll join us on this journey and uh, through this PowerPoint, and then continue to join us in co-creations around the world, wherever you live, urban and rural, and consciously try to reframe and redesign and reimagine communities where we're caring communities. Okay. I'd like to give a land acknowledgement for the Toronto area on Turtle Island, where I am right now, and then after a land acknowledgement for Hawaii, where the Maui Aloha project began. The land acknowledgement for Toronto. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. 
We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. The land acknowledgement for Hawaii. We acknowledge Hawaii as an Indigenous space where the descendants of the original people, uh, Kanaka, Oiwi, or Native Hawaiian. And so some of the contents, as we'll take you along a journey here, uh, where how we started, we were evaluating, we were looking at the state of the world, well, five or six, seven years ago, and it's uh, in more, much more disarray, even in the past year. And talking about our uh, a design, a redesign, a co-creation, and every community will look different depending on where they are and who's part of it. Our dream, which will include includes our mission and our vision statements, and the eco village co-creation and our team. Our start, the reevaluation. So, who are we, the Maui Aloha Project? our vision council. Our vision council is made up of stellar individuals who are heartfelt, come from a background of working with communities, in communities, off-grid, education, artists, biologists, community support workers, computer scientists, ecologists, educators, engineers, environmentalists, health and well-being consultants, healers, life coaches, mental health counselors, musicians, retreat leaders, spiritual leaders and clergy, technologists, and more. And this is just our vision council, never mind uh, many hundreds of others of people who have come uh, to be of service. And the reevaluation, the Maui Aloha Project map, Eco Village Initiative emerged from discussions about values and visions for new living learning and healing possibilities. And some of the questions we ask ourselves and some of the questions that I ask in um, my uh, consulting practice to parents or to children or to guidance counselors um, are our values in line with how we live our lives, what, what we want to do and what we are doing. Do our school's values reinforce our child's or our household's priorities? And if we could redesign the school and workplace, what would we do? And some of the major themes, what are the spaces, the physical, like the schools, like a, a schoolhouse and an office, which have been totally challenged during COVID. And we see that we can continue living and learning without the schoolhouse and without the office, but what do we lose? And these are the questions. We do lose the social. So how do we have a balance? How do we balance the indoor and outdoor spaces, which aren't really represented in the schoolhouse or the workplace? Time, what kind of hours should there be? Uh, how many days a week, the work hours? We talked about when the, um, when, uh, the computers came in en masse, especially around 2010, 2012 with the handheld device. It was supposed to make the world an easier place where we'd have to work fewer hours, but it's not necessarily so. And is that okay? Um, and we've seen different things during COVID that we can redesign and it, it might work. And students segregated, segregated by age, grade one, grade two, grade three, or inclusive, all age schoolhouse and intergenerational learning community. And our work and our school environments are predominantly sedentary, unfortunately, and perhaps we should consider a non-sedentary, more active uh, balance in, in our days. And externally imposed curriculum, which is what our schools have, we have a universal curriculum mostly around the world versus a self-directed self design, learning design called Udagogy some of the things that we were discussing. And so the redesign, the Maui Aloha Project initiative prioritizes an inclusive design that values thriving and sustainable well-being. And our priorities to be stewards of the planet, to have an inclusive design, to be intergenerational, a growth-based mindset rather than a disability mindset. 
honoring multiliteracies where every what everyone can come to the table with shall be and what the, what's our interest can be um, utilized and celebrated and can, and a big contribution to a to a community and we want to honor indigenous ancient and cultural wisdoms all of our all of our identities seen and unseen immersing in democratic self-directed learning play ceremony and circle, natural methodologies and technologies, self-sustaining and regenerative ecology, permaculture ecosystems, and learning and connecting with hundreds of people and intentional communities globally, and exploring diverse paradigms for living, learning and healing. This is part of the REIT design. And that's what we have been doing in the past years, exploring these diverse paradigms that already exist and considering new paradigms to move into the future. And our dream and our mission, which you can read, uh, the Maui Aloha Project is a living model that promotes and supports an inclusive, thriving community and planet. It's a new paradigm for conscious co-creation of intergenerational living, learning and healing possibilities for a sustainable future. Integrating regenerative holistic practices by exploring transformation of human consciousness through education, healing arts, and as stewards of the earth. Our vision statement, the Maui Aloha Project is co-creating a blueprint for thriving in a living and learning community in Maui, Hawaii, USA. And we also have a community emerging in, in Ontario, Canada. Maui Aloha Project supports the co-creation of intentional communities throughout the world. It, MAP is a global humanitarian model for future generations, living sustainably, rearing children together with their communities, caring for the earth with all its inhabitants and, and each other with aloha. And so what is aloha, Maui Aloha Project? Some people refer to something called the Aloha Spirit, which incorporates many pieces of reverence, of reverence to God, whatever God is to our, each of us, a mana or a spiritual influence used in manifesting love, peace, and compassion, and to consciously manifest life joyously in the present. And so the Maui Aloha Project is a project dedicating to supporting in a graceful way, in a harmonious way, in a honest way, in a gentle and patient and persevering way of a redesign, a way that can work for everybody together as one planet. And our belief that inclusivity and a balanced lifestyle and humanitarian principles bring us closer to each other and our planet. Through thoughtful interaction and intentional building, we can create a happy, healthier world. And it's important to mention also the Millennium Development Goals, which I spoke about just before, where the United Nations General Assembly adopted by world leaders in 2015. Ma Ma the Maui Aloha Project is committed to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals to transform our world. And these are to be met by 2030. These are goals for um, our planet to be met by 2030 and beyond uh, for the next thousand years. As we can see from one to 17, we uh, know poverty and zero hunger, good health and well being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, meaning in the water, life on the land. Peace and justice, strong in, and justice, strong institutions and partnerships to achieve the goals. And of course, Maui Aloha Project is looking for all kinds of partners to help us um, uh, amplify and increase uh, uh, different kinds of living, learning, and healing paradigms 
throughout the world. And we aim to have a reset, um, whether it be in an urban center or, or rural areas. There's all kinds of paradigms that I'll, I'll talk about later. But um, this is an important for uh, communities to follow the SDGs. And the journey ahead, eco-village creation. MAPS priority is to celebrate and honor all people and diversities. And this is paramount in our collective vision. And uh, different components of our eco village include the living component, the learning component, the healing component, farming and permaculture systems, socializing, which is even more paramount now. Uh, being in COVID and the very uh, challenge of being able to socialize, to, to have a conversation, to sit closely with another person, hold hands, have a dance, have a cup of coffee, hug your mother, uh, go to school and play with your friends, play at a playground. These are all being challenged and at various degrees all around the world. Uh, and this is really a core of of our communities is the social aspect, um, breaking bread with each other. Some communities will break bread, will wanna have a meal, a shared meal every day. And some communities might wanna have a, a shared meal once a month or around festivals um, or harvests. And then of course, there's the energizing component, uh, which, talk, uh, which addresses sustainable, um, technologies, new and also ancient, which we can learn from our Indigenous um, communities, which represent 15% of the world's populations. We don't want to lose those wisdoms. And our sustainable and regenerative community includes, as we've said, an educate, a learning center, a healing and wellness sanctuary, an eco village, and a permaculture farm. And there is a map of uh, the island of Maui. And the island of Maui is in the South Pacific and is prime for any kind of growing, which is incredible. Uh, the Hawaiian islands are the most uh, removed land mass from any other um, land in the world uh, between the Asias and the Americas and have had to be self-sufficient since the beginning of time as has the rest of the world and not dependent on um, shipping and um, air um, travel for food and other resources. Uh, so it's easy to grow there, although we, we even know there uh, what the optimal growing conditions will be for a community that wants to be sustainable like we do. Um, but we also know that around the world, the technologies are sophisticated, that even in North America, in cold Canada, with uh, new kinds of uh, climate smart greenhouses, we can even grow pineapples and watermelon. Not sure if we should be doing this in the winter months, uh, but uh, we have the technology. So um, there uh, is no reason for hunger anymore uh, when we can be sharing these wisdoms uh, locally and globally. And this, of course, is a famous eco village. It's actually the Green School in Bali, Indonesia, which I had the good fortune to visit. It's a totally, it's covered, but a totally outdoor with the tropical air um, environment. Uh, it's totally immersed with nature in nature, the kids totally learning in all kinds of spaces. It's really, really a model. It is a model to be replicated and is replicated. Um, and it has a mix of all kinds of students there, Balinese and an international um, mix of uh, population and visitors. And then here are some living possibilities to suggest that can be anywhere from ranch house to a single dwelling house, cabins, townhouses, apartment styles, motel styles, university dormitory style, uh, cottages, tents or camping or yurts, tiny houses or micro houses. The market is growing 
And there's all kinds of alternatives that um, are climate smart using uh, responsible uh, methodologies and, and, um, and uh, affordable homes and mobile homes and all kinds of new uh, possibilities. And uh, we also hope that in our in these communities that it will allow for full time residents and workers, short term retreat participants and day visitors, as we mentioned before. And here's some pictures. It makes it interesting. Um, you know, a tiny home in the top left and a yurt or tent, um, which can be quite glamped out called glamping. It's very popular. Um, 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 for-profit glamping, uh, especially in the northwest of the United States, um, and also even up the coast on the west of, of Canada, uh, is very popular. Um, and there's even a whole caboose um, little towns uh, where they have glamped out the insides of caboose cars, and they're quite livable. These are trains or cabooses that um, aren't being used anymore but they're a viable space, they're a viable roof uh, and with the washroom and living spaces and whatnot. And, and then of course, different kinds of communities. And then of course, in an urban center or a rural, um, there can be modern buildings with all kinds of vertical gardening options, rooftop gardening options, all kinds of green spaces, which is crucial because having especially um, urban gardening and farming can reverse um, the climate crisis that we're in. It can change the CO2 emissions and uh, by enriching our soil and bringing green into our spaces uh, and having food sovereignty uh, locally, you know, in our neighborhoods uh, can really reverse the crisis that we're in. And then of course, there are also ready to go drop, um, you know, a prefab home that is, uh, you know, all terrain um, worthy, weather worthy, you know, whether it be water or fire, uh, there are options like these throughout the world that um, we can employ and different kinds of spaces like this. Some communities, uh, don't want cars to access all of their homes and they want bicycles or walking trails or golf carts or different kinds of transports like that, even in uh, North America, colder, in colder climates. Though I'm showing you pictures of um, buildings and houses made from wood and from bamboo, uh, which of course bamboo um, uh, isn't so abundant in colder places, but where it is, they're entirely crystallized on the inside and they're very strong and, um, and worthy of uh, 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 weather resilient. And then of course there's yurts that, can, that I've seen also in cold places like Ontario, Canada and elsewhere of course that can be quite modern that are two level. Um, you see a picture of a bed with greenery all around it with a skylight and then living spaces, kitchen spaces. So there's all kinds of possibilities uh, 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 that include affordable design. The Maui Aloha Project encourages people to come and they can, you know, it'll, it'll be different in every community. They may own their space, they may rent their space, or they may work trade for their space. All kinds of possibilities. And so, we should and could repurpose, reuse and recycle uh, so many of, let's say the transportation um, uh, vehicles that we have discarded, uh, such as, tra as trains. So here's a picture of the interior of a caboose, of, of a caboose, train caboose. And here's also a picture of the interior of airplanes. Um, so would we really have whole neighborhoods of train cars, of planes, maybe even of ships? Who knows what the future will bring, but instead of just discarding them, uh, um, we can be making spaces for people to have a roof over their head and a decent roof over their head and even food 
on their own little space, which they can tra trade with a neighbor or contribute to the community in a large community allotment area. And then of course, we talked about the a democratic learning center an intergenerational democratic center, which is important. Um, we really believe in the self-guided natural flow of learning and learning intergenerationally, kids together in play and supporting that with all of the people around who can support the particular learning. If a child wants to learn a language, finding that community member. If a child loves surfing, finding uh, someone in the community who can help with that learning. In surfing, we would have to consider the engineering of a surfboard, the materials used, assessing uh, its science, uh, assessing the weather patterns, being in the ocean with uh, ocean animals and um, physiology, balance on a surfboard and so forth. Um, so we can bring learning out in anything, skateboarding, uh, the arts, maths, you know, on a basketball court. You know, there's many studies that show that many children have difficulty learning math. Uh, being and math being one of the gatekeeping uh, subject areas. But yet when you take those same kids out to a basketball court, they can, uh, can successfully master those same math skills through statistics uh, and all kinds of, of um, you know, different ways of learning, uh, holistic ways of learning. And uh, it's quite interesting. So, maybe gone is the day of the schoolhouse used entirely from 100% uh, where kids are sitting. And maybe we have different paradigms to consider. And so here we talk about indoor outdoor learning centers. And uh, really we must involve, it's been spoken about over the past, I guess it's 10 days of the summit. But we must really involve the kids and the communities and the youth in planting and really learning how to plant, really learning how to garden and really learning how to take those skills and make them transferable to the home. Uh, and really increasing that on mass, both from an economic, economical perspective, but also uh, for food security. Uh, we just saw recently during COVID, um, shipping being blocked in, in um, you know, throughout the world. And uh, what will we do for food if our stores are not receiving the food? We have to have a plan. We have to have a plan for the community at large and the children systemically, not that I ever purport to have a uh, externally imposed curriculum, but the, the children, it should be suggested and encouraged and supported by everybody everywhere that uh, children start to learn uh, food security, uh, food transferable um, skills uh, going forward for the future. And these children and youth will become the leaders of their community and this has to continue on. And then a well being sanctuary with all kinds of modalities and programs, including integrative, traditional, and alternative healing, all kinds of body work, energy chi and mana practices, transformational arts and water therapies, and um, all kinds of retreats and workshops that will deepen and expand awareness and, and encourage healing and restoration and regeneration water sanctuary. So these are all pictures from uh, very famous intentional communities. And unfortunately, uh, with the fires over the past years, as a result of the climate crisis, a number of these places have burnt down, which is so sad because many of them have been hosts to uh, a living community, visitors and residents alike for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. And uh, it's a real loss. And I know that they're being uh, rebuilt. 
And of course, we want to have movement. We want to have spaces for yoga and dance. We want to have spaces for art. We want to be able to do the things that we weren't able to do during our school years or our career or our work years that kind of gets put to the side. Um, uh, or perhaps they were part of our, our work or our schooling that we want to continue to foster those creative sides in the art barn, reading in a library, theater to watch movies and also to perform all kinds of uh, productions, community centers for all kinds of purposes sweat lodges for ceremony and other kinds of ceremonial um, spaces, classrooms, meeting spaces, and meditation spaces. Uh, one of the communities that I visited in Scotland called Findhorn, which is very famous, they began their day every morning, all community members and guests who were visiting would visit uh, one of their uh, community spaces and there would be uh, 25 or half an hour meditation led by different members. Um, and then you would go to another space, another room by the dining hall and there would be music. And there was a book of world music and everybody sang together, which was so good for the lungs and so good for shared vibration and so good for the our uh, um, ancestral um, identities known and unknown where the resonance of various songs from various cultures and various corners of the world um, came and and it would it would resonate and reverberate within ourselves it was a beautiful way to start the morning with each other and if someone didn't show it was noticed and after this um, meditation and this song, you would go to breakfast together, everybody together. You could take it outside, you could have it indoors. And in some places I've seen, um, you know, uh, full, um, uh, you know, full dining uh, services and dining staff. And in some places I've seen, you know, such as in uh, New York City in Manhattan, I've seen um, uh, buildings, apartment buildings, where every unit or those who want to participate take a turn uh, in preparing and planning and cleaning from the meal. So unit 5B might always have the third Thursday breakfast of every month, and unit 17C might have you know, the fourth Sunday dinner of every month, that kind of thing. So not, um, it's a nice way. I, I know that during COVID, I've heard so many stories of uh, being lonely and alone, not being able to go to restaurants or a coffee shop or a friend's place um, for a meal. And um, this is a really essential need and want of many people not to be alone and to be sharing a healthy meal. Um, it's hard sometimes to cook for one, um, but when you cook for more, maybe there's more responsibility sometimes. And so more program spaces, movement and program spaces. And then we must consider uh, regenerative and self-sustaining farming for food security, like permaculture, aquaculture, composting technology, and biodynamic agriculture. And here are some pictures just to show of different fields. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we welcome community participation. We hope for students from schools and community members and even universities for people to come and help in their various neighborhoods, whether it's an urban, um, climate smart, you know, rooftop initiative uh, where the people of that building or the neighborhood schools or whatnot can come and participate um, in a community gardening um, or uh, if it's more formally, um, youth can come and children could come to participate and even get certification in climate smart practices and uh, in post-secondary after the um, uh, uh, child school school years in post-secondary, uh, you know, um, students can come uh, that are from regenerative uh, or sustainable programs or, um, and they can participate in planning 
um, uh, and, and participating in these regenerative possibilities, improving the soil quality and um, really making an outreach to the community uh, with their knowledge uh, to, that they can pass on. And there, here are some pictures of some aquaculture uh, initiatives. And a lot of these communities may choose to have a restaurant, perhaps an organic restaurant, a grocery, a snack area, and a community kitchen. And indoor and outdoor greenhouses that we've talked about, uh, even in cold places like North America, Turtle Island, yeah. And the energizing component that we spoke about, the climate smart practices towards a low carbon imprint and uh, utilizing green innovative construction, uh, green building materials, methodologies and services like earthen structures, bamboo and hemp. And so much is being learned, you know, even from hemp uh, to, um, to replace hopefully plastic bags and plastic in general and so many other things. Uh, we do have the technology, we're living in an age where space tourism is just about to begin. There's even um, competition for space tourism. So certainly we could put it all together uh, with the intentional communities that have come before us, with the indigenous, indigenous and ancient and cultural wisdoms that have come before us, with the water desalination technologies and knowledges that we have and put it together so that nobody on planet earth should be hungry and nobody should be without a roof over their heads. Um, and this is part of what we want to do and we're grassroots and starting with one community at a time. And Maui Aloha project integrates sustainable, regenerative, holistic energies and technologies as you can see like solar power, wind farms, and water desalinization, as I just spoke about. And then of course, we want to be immersed with the animal world, land animals and water animals. Uh, we believe in the healing and the therapeutic benefits of interacting with animals, caring for, for animals, caring, for, you know, and, uh, and really making that uh, a mainstay of children's development and of com community participation. And then of course, we spoke about socializing, having a community space, community spaces. Uh, this again is the, yeah, one of them is the interior of the green school and one of them is somewhere else. Um, and of course, these are in, uh, 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 weather geographical areas that can have an open concept like this. And also uh, we wanna honor ceremony and tradition. We've been, as we've been leaving our, our rural uh, communities, as children have been leaving the rural communities in the industrial age and coming to the cities where the jobs are and where the learning seems to be, we have tended to water down the fabric of, of, of our identities, which should be celebrated, um, not to be a dividing tool, but to be a uniting tool. And we know that all we all come from the same place, from the same beginnings. And we've all, all of our peoples and have traveled the earth and have merged and mingled with everybody. Um, we want to celebrate ceremony, we want to celebrate tradition, and we want to share that, we don't want it to divide. And it's interesting because today's uh, theme was disarmament, which uh, the day worked for me in my calendar to present. But um, what we do want to do is to come together and hold hands, hold hands. Uh, uh, you know, tomorrow's talk is about peace. So we want to come together all of our various identities uh, and ancestral you know, beginnings and come together holding hands with each other in the hope for peace and coexistence and uh, thriving ways on planet earth with each other and with earth, with mother earth. 
And we want to really, uh, I remember in talking with uh, some um, of our Hawaiian um, kahunas, elders on Maui, we were explaining what uh, we're trying to support and encourage. And they said, this is nothing new. This is the old village way. And that's exactly it. We're not trying to do anything to anyone. We're not trying to create something new. We're trying to remember our wisdoms and the wisdoms of the people that came before us. And in each of the various regions, the in particular indigenous peoples have been sustainable since the beginning of time. And that's what we're trying to do to celebrate those knowledges and um, harness them for our survival. And of course, uh, we want to, from a holistic perspective, from a e ecological perspective, and from a human perspective, we want to consider the full spectrum of the body, the mind, the heart, and the soul. Uh, those are all components that need to be cherished and nourished. And here you see some, um, oh, uh, that's, um, Kuan Yin at Harbin Hot Springs. And this is a deep um, kiva near Ojai, California, the Krishnamurti Center for Peace. And then those are um, actually sound pyramids in Bali, Indonesia, uh, where there's sound therapies that go on. So we hope to have all these kind of um, spaces you know, and depending on where we are, all these kinds of spaces for ceremony and healing. And then of course, most important to us is um, being stewards of the earth and having ample opportunities, whether we're in an urban or a rural area to connect with nature on hiking trails and vistas and labyrinth walks, forests, water, sacred sites, all of that, where we are really more balanced outside with nature than we have been for the past 50 years, maybe 100 years. Um, and um, that's paramount to us. And then we, uh, uh, the Vision Council of the Maui Aloha Project have visited many, visited or lived um, in many intentional communities. And here you see some examples such as Orville in India, Esalen in California, Findhorn in Scotland, Harbin Hot Springs in California, which is hopefully being rebuilt, Kalani in Hawaii, Kibbutz Lotan in Israel, Earthsong Eco Village in New Zealand, Brighton Bush in Oregon, uh, in the United States and Sierra Hot Springs in California, just to name a few. Um, and um, we continue to visit uh, communities around the world. And uh, whether it be in an urban center, as we said, like Manhattan or Los Angeles, there are, are buildings um, where they are having shared meals because that's essential to the core. Um, there are um, different uh, um, spaces where people are coming together. They're solely around a bonfire. That's the core of the evening. Um, and of course, um, some p communities we've gone to, you, you know, want to share their, their shir shirt on their back even. So there's all kinds of paradigms and the Maui Aloha Project is here to support uh, the co-creation of a particular community, whatever that will look like, um, a conscious co-creation, being responsible to each other and to the planet and to ourselves. And as we're consulting with specialists in many fields in order to develop revenues to assist the, the community in, in transitioning to a thriving sustainable community, and we have, this has become an international uh, initiative with the University of Toronto, OISE, supporting the initiative and also the University of Hawaii at Manoa on Oahu, the College of Education and Center on Disability Studies. 
Uh, so, uh, which is really great because we're not only coming at this from a redesign, from a grassroots perspective, but we're also coming to this as a redesign that the educators and schools are seeing is needed. So that's, that's wonderful to consider uh, the progress of these kind of initiatives. And there's all kinds of contributors. I'm naming just a few here. This is one of our first early meetings years ago. And the, the artists of the, the artist of the logo uh, of, of the picture of the Maui Aloha project um, is on the far right there. His name is Drew. And um, uh, there's some people from the University of Hawaii in this picture, uh, democratic, um, uh, Learning Center uh, director and founder and um, uh, aquaculture uh, uh, support um, uh, person who was the director of aquaculture at the University of Hawaii on Maui and some of our Vision Council members, which is wonderful. So all kinds of people are coming together and saying we need to, we want to help you. We want to help make this happen here, there and everywhere. Fundamental changes are needed in the way we conduct global, political, environmental, and socioeconomic systems so that the inhabitants of Earth and future generations can survive and thrive. And with that, I thank you for um, coming to listen to the Maui Aloha Pro about the Maui Aloha project. We invite you to um, contact us if this interests you, if, uh, if you have land and you need people, if you have people, but we need land, if you um, have an idea or a space, or if you want to be involved in co-creating this kind of, or participating in these kinds of communities, uh, we're happy to help um, connect and facilitate that process. And we hope to see you at, um, uh, we hope to see community caring about community um, more coming together more um, at, in conscious design, you know, for our sustainable and regenerative future. And uh, come visit us at MauiAlohaProject.org and be in touch at stephsjourney4 at gmail.com. And uh, we wish you well. We wish um, that um, Maui Loa Project continue to be of service uh, going forward. And uh, we look forward to sitting around the bonfire with you, uh, having a shared meal with you, and, uh, uh, and uh, hearing about all of the great initiatives going forward uh, that can help care for each other and our communities and for the well-being of society and the well-being of our children and youth in particular, particular um, that they should be healthy, resilient, and happy in their childhoods and go on to being self-sustaining um, grown-ups, adults um, that can feed and house themselves and their communities and participate in a wholesome way with each other, with their communities and with nature and planet Earth. So thank you so much. And, um, and, uh, we hope that you'll be in touch. Would love you please to leave your contact information in the chat. If there's any uh, um, questions, I do see uh, somebody um, inquiring, uh, is this an Afro-friendly inclusive project? Yes, and uh, we envision, yes, and uh, we have been working with Andrew Williams Jr. and it, the Edfu Foundation. And yes, we um, are working with uh, in various continents. It's not just a North American project at all. 
looking forward to um, amplifying the opportunities in Africa, in India, um, um, in Asia, all over, in Europe, all over the world. They're, they are starting to amplify and in different places there's different needs and uh, different population needs as well. So um, please be in touch and we look forward to continuing the conversation. Aloha A, A is from Canada. So um, everyone be well and wishing everybody peace. Thank you so much.